Hey everyone, so in this video I'm gonna do a review of Greg Doucette's uh, cookbook. So I'm, I'm reviewing his cookbook, okay? So uh, a little bit of backstory of uh, me and Greg Doucette. So I started following the guy, uh, first time, the first video I saw about him was uh, a video he did about uh, Larry Scott. Larry, sorry, Larry Wills, uh, the, the power lifter, this amazing uh, genetic phenom, uh, Larry Wills. And he made, uh, I saw Greg Doucette make a video about him uh, telling us how he called him out on some dumb things he did on Instagram and how he got uh, butt hurt, Larry Wills, and he blocked him. And I found it, I, I, I thought it was the most hilarious thing ever because uh, Larry Wills looks like this alpha chad that doesn't get bothered by anything greater than life character and you find this random dude, Greg Doucette, he was random dude back when I uh, first <coughs> found out who he was, right? He was just a, a, a guy that was screaming, right? So you see this random dude just uh, getting under the skin of uh, this amazing alpha child, uh, Larry Wills. He's uh, like, I, I, it, was, it just was so funny to me uh, that uh, he, he got triggered by that. Uh, anyway, so... That was the first video I saw about him. Then I checked uh, some other vi videos of him and I was like, oh my God, this guy, this guy is cool, right? And because he didn't have many followers, I started following him and I felt like I'm like part of his small following and like I'm in on this cool thing, right? And that's the funny thing with small channels. Uh, you, you feel that uh, it's like small and you, you kind of know everybody and you just value the, inf the, the influencer, the YouTuber, the coach more uh, and you have a, a more one-on-one -on -one relationship with the coach, right? It's not like now that he has like millions of followers and me, uh, I'm just like a drop in the ocean of followers. Back then we were like just 10,000 people, 20,000 people, and we're just rooting for the guy. Uh, he was taking down the big names on the fitness industry. Now he himself is like one of the biggest names, right? So that's my back story with Greg Doucette. He, I even emailed him once and I let him know that here in Greece, we used to have um, uh, clenbuterol as cough syrup and you could buy it anytime any day without a prescription from the pharmacy and i told him like it's pure five percent and it's it's not only cough syrup it's cough syrup for children imagine that and when i when i realized that this is this clenbuterol like I, I i start talking with people in the forums here in greece and they were like yeah just buy this uh, it's called spiropent you can buy it in the pharmacies right and i i bought the the thing in the pharmacy just to, to see what is what the, the hype is all about and i realized that this is the syrup my mom used to give me when i was a child and i was sick and i had uh, like uh, uh, when I was a kid and I just want to clear my throat, which is the, the craziest thing ever. Imagine giving a child clenbuterol. Uh, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like, I remember not being able to sleep like for, for the whole night. Uh, and I remember just taking this stupid clenbuterol as a child and then trying to sleep. And I would wake up in the middle of the night with my heart pumping and like sweating all over. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I would have taken like... Uh, uh, to, uh, to around, it was around 15 to 20 uh, mg's of clenbuterol, if I uh, count it correctly. I would take this right before sleep and I would wake up one hour later and I couldn't sleep. I was like, what's going on? I'm probably really, really sick. But it, I, it was just me taking stupid clenbuterol. Anyway, that's out of the way. And he even uh, replied and was like, ah, it's crazy. Um, things... Like he, he, like I wrote him like this huge paragraph and he replied with like, ah, oh, it's crazy, right? And I was like, yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, so that's my history with Gregor Doucet. And then he, he, this, um, this huge uh, thing controversy happened with Brandon Hardin, where Brandon Hardin said his coaching is a scam because he basically gives you a cookbook, right? And people were like, oh, give us this cookbook, sell it separately. And he did that. He sold it separately and people started buying like crazy. And I was one of the people that bought back then when he when the cookbook first came out and I didn't really want to pirate it. And I was just like, yeah, let's support the guy. And also, like, even if I found one recipe, that worked, the 100 bucks are t t t totally, definitely worth it. Even if I didn't find any recipes that I absolutely loved, 
this 100 bucks for me were still worth it because those are 20 or 30 recipes that don't work for me. This is a method that doesn't work for me. What method? His low calorie dense, uh, high protein volume eating method. So it w it's worth it to try like uh, to try this cookbook, to try his method, to buy his stuff, to figure out if it's w if it if it works for you or not. If it doesn't work, then you know it doesn't work and you can move on to the next thing until you find that one thing that really does work for you. As Thomas Edison have, has said, I haven't failed. I just found 10,000 ways that don't work. So whatever, like you bought the cookbook, you didn't find any recipes that work for you. Those are like 100 recipes that don't work for you. So you can just move on, spend another 100 bucks to something else, to another coaching or like another method and try fasting, right? And eventually, if you're persistent enough, you'll find that one thing that will get you lean and muscular and healthy and it'll make everything be worth it, right? So yeah, for me, a hundred bucks worth the investment. A thousand bucks still worth the investment. Ten thousand bucks still worth the investment. That's the way I think about things now. I did. I used to not think that way about stuff, but like now, that's why. That's how I think about things. Like if, like me, like let's say I'm convinced that I'm gonna get ripped and I'm gonna get muscular and I'm gonna get healthy. And when I close my eyes, I see like myself being raped, jacked, and I'm 100% sure that I'll achieve this result in the future. When I'm sure that I'll get this result, I don't care about losing some money here or there, right? I, I just care to get in there faster. So I'll do anything to get there faster, right? But that's like, I've worked on my mindset and on my worldview and my paradigm and my philosophy a lot and I came up with this philosophy which is uh, the best philosophy for me to grow right because even money it's not like these hundred bucks you'll put into like a stock and you'll get like 10,000 in fi five years down the line that, that almost never happens like these hundred bucks if you don't spend them on this cookbook which is an investment right uh, on yourself on the things you want to do you would probably spend 20 here 20 there and before you know it they're gone and they're gone and they're wasted and they didn't get you closer to where you wanted to be so that's how i look at money anyway that's out of the way right so let's uh, talk about uh, the cookbook so i bought the cookbook i received it immediately i had no issues i i know the guy's getting some heat uh, because of uh, of the way he tries to like uh, prevent piracy. But for me personally, it was a great uh, buying experience. I just bought the cookbook and I received the cookbook. It was <laughs> it's as simple as that. So I started trying the recipes, right? So uh, back then, Greg had uploaded like uh, tens of his recipes online on YouTube, right? So he had his protein ice creams, uh, you could kind of get an idea on his wraps and his uh, french toasts and most like he had uh, his lava and like he had like 10 or 20 recipes online now he has taken down most of these videos right so i bought the cookbook with the expectation to find like more recipes uh, amazing as amazing as those recipes that are getting like uh, advertised the most right in his youtube channel well, I was kind of disappointed at first because the recipes were so, so many and I ended up just using the free recipes he had his, on his uh, YouTube channel. So when I bought the, when I first bought his cookbook, I was a little bit disappointed, right? But I just waited. I gave it some time because these things, guys, work like that. You, you can't expect your life to change as soon as you buy something, right? And usually when it comes to info products, which is like his recipe book, just because there is so much marketing and hype around it, which is not necessarily like something evil, it's just a well-marketed product, right? Uh, you have the expectation your life to change like in a day, uh, overnight, right? Wake up and like be shredded or something. But that doesn't really happen, okay? And I was a little bit disappointed. Even though I've worked on my mindset so much, I bought the cookbook and I was like, ah, damn it, uh, nothing changed in my life, right? But I gave it time. I gave it time. I had it there sitting on my computer, on my phone. Just gave it time. And I would check a recipe here, a recipe there, a recipe here, a recipe there. 
and start finding recipes that I really enjoy, right? And even the recipes he had on his uh, YouTube channel, the specific instructions were in his cookbook. So it didn't matter like that they were on his YouTube channel because if I want to get the exact same thing, I had to check the recipe book. So I know Greg probably felt that he's giving too much away for free on his YouTube channel, but honestly, let's say the protein ice cream, you can't get it right just by watching a YouTube video. You need the exact recipe, the exact portions, the exact amounts of everything. And even then it's hard. Even then you have to try over and over and over again to get it right and get the consistency and thickness perfectly right, right? So yeah, I would check the YouTube videos and then I would check the cookbook for specific uh, instructions that were not on his YouTube channel. Then I started diversing away from on, from his YouTube recipes and start checking out recipes that were only in his cookbook, okay? And I'd find recipes that I really, really enjoyed and I started eating from his cookbook for like a month or two uh, just uh, just because I wanted to try everything and I was like really and it was like this new thing that changed my life, right? So I started eating every single meal uh, from his cookbook. And it was amazing, right? It was very, very easy to eat enough protein. It was very, very easy to, to stay in my calories. And it was his recipes were so good that me, like I'm a coach, right? I coach people uh, getting lean. My channel is called Dadbot to Six Pack. Okay, so that's what I do for a living. And I started incorporating these recipes to my own clients. So I was like, check out this cool little video, this cool little ice cream. And they would write me back and they'd whine that uh, the ice cream didn't is not thick. It's that wine because the, the recipe didn't go well for them. They tried the, the ice cream and it wasn't ice cream, it was very watery. And I was like, you have to try again and again and again until you get it right. The, the, the benefit is that you'll have a zero color ice cream for the rest of your life. It's worth the tries, guys. So that's what I would tell my own clients. I would give them the recipe. And even if they whined about it, I would tell them they didn't do it right. And you should try again and again and again, right? So I followed his uh, cookbook and his diet and uh, the way he does things for like a, a good one or two months for, for a minute. OK, now I reached a point that I outgrew this phase. OK, so when you find a new guru, a new mentor, a new person you look up to, you look up to them and you're really inspired and you like you enter their world, their frame and you do everything as they say. You buy their stuff, you follow their diets, their routines, their everything. Right. And but you reach a point that you start thinking that, hey, maybe I should do this thing this way instead of this way. Maybe I should start doing this thing this way instead of this way. So I was doing his stuff for a for a couple of months and then I started diversifying and doing my own thing. So I used Greg's cookbook and diet and methods uh, as a stepping stone to get a step closer to my goals and make my way even better, right? It's like programming. When people write programs, you've, you've probably heard about open source programs. So what is an open source? Some programmers code like write, write a program and it's open source, which means everybody can download it and have it ready to go out of the box. Just download the code and you have the program running. Let's say an antivirus, right? You write an antivirus that's open source. Some guy just downloads it and uses this code as a stepping stone to make his program even better, right? So that's how I used Greg's program. So so the, the changes I made to the diet was that I stopped caring about all my meals being like low calorie, uh, dense and high in protein. And I found out that I'm good with just having one meal per day or one meal every two days that's low in calories and dense that stretches out the stomach and makes me feel full. OK, and the rest of the meals I can try less hard. I can I can just eat whatever and just uh, make sure it tastes great and it's kind of healthy and that's fine for me. OK, so this is so let's say this is how I used to do things and this is uh, after Greg. So I combined these two things and now I have my way of doing things, which is like a combination of all of those things. OK, and that's the best way to do things as well in your life. You, you don't want to just follow everything like a ship and just believe everything and take uh, 
uh, and believe everything, you should take everything with a grain of salt. So now, one year later, the things I still uh, cook from his cookbooks are the following. The protein ice cream, I do that still at least maybe once a month, I'll do it. And the French toast, I cook it in the weekends. I love eating French toast for breakfast or for lunch. Sometimes I just eat it uh, two or three times per day. And then I get bored and I don't eat it for like a month. And then I start eating it like every day, uh, every meal, right? And his wraps, I used to do his wraps uh, word for word from his recipes. Then I start doing my own wraps and then I transition to doing, uh, instead of using uh, like a tortilla, I start using uh, toast bread. Okay. I start using toast bread and my toaster and I just like it that way much more, much more. So yeah, uh, bottom line, it was 1000% worth it. And even though I, I like my, my diet is changed, like maybe 10 to 20% from his cookbook, it's still a massive, massive, still a massive, massive improvement to my diet and my life. In, even like a 1% improvement for me, it's amazing. So uh, Greg, I really thank you. Your methods are really amazing. And like uh, the, the things you did, let's say in your whole entire life, like let's say this thing took you like 20 or 30 years to perfect. Now, you're giving it out like that as an open source for people to use as stepping stone. And me, like an up and coming coach, right? I can use all of those things that it took you like 30 years to figure out. And I just can take them like this and start from there. I don't have to start from zero. I start from where you leave it, right? So that's really, really amazing. And now the criticisms of uh, cookbook and of uh, uh, Greg's way of doing things. I have a couple of criticisms. That doesn't mean I hate on the guy. That's not a knock on the guy. The guy is amazing. As I said, he changed my life in a positive way. And I, I'm grateful for that. The money I spent, uh, it, it's worth it 1000% and yada yada. But those are the criticisms because it's a review after all, right? So let's start with the criticisms. Uh, the number uh, one is like the protein bars. So the protein bars don't really fit the low calorie dense criteria, right? They're like high in calories. And Greg used to like give shit to like oats. It was like, ah, oats suck, oats suck. They have many, too many calories. But protein also has too many calories. Like calorie for calorie, one gram of protein equals one gram of carb. So there's nothing wrong with eating carbs, like uh, uh, just plain carbs, like uh, oats, right? So let's say uh, the way I do protein bars now are like 30% uh, or 40% uh, protein and the rest is just carbs. That's because it's cheaper and it's easier to make. And I don't really like to waste all this protein. It's a huge hassle to order the protein and get it to, like stock up and blah, blah, blah. So I don't really want to like use so much protein. So if I want like if I want to make uh, some protein bars, I use 30 percent protein and the rest is just carbs. The, I'll blend the carbs or I just use them like that. It's still great. It still works great. OK, this is uh, one one criticism. Another criticism is that low calorie dense uh, is not necessary for every recipe. You don't have to eat every single meal like that. You can eat one meal a day or two days and it will probably be enough for you and it'll keep you full. Another criticism is that when I use when I get used to eat uh, so much and only uh, like uh, eat 500, let's say I eat like I used to eat one protein ice cream and then like a couple of wraps, right? That's like 600 calories, 700 calories. And I would die. I would get so full and stuffed and I'd keep, keep eating. I would not stop, right? And it was only 700 calories. That was great. That was great. The problem was when I was eating out or eating at my dad, let's say. My dad doesn't cook low calorie dense stuff, right? He cooks like his traditional dishes and foods like kebab and stuff. These things are like... Uh, uh, calorie bombs okay but the thing was I wasn't disciplined enough to stop eating at my dad's because I was used to just stuff my face with as much food as possible and not worry about calories because they were so low in calories so my stomach was trained to eat as much as possible and eat and manage huge volumes of food. So when I would eat out when I would go to my dad or mom or some other place to eat 
I'd have to eat two or three or four thousand calories just to feel somewhat satiated uh, because I, I had trained my like stomach as a competitive eater. So that was another thing that made me back off and be like, whoa, maybe I should like kind of back off from volume eating. Maybe I should do it like once a day or once a week or twice a week and not every single meal uh, because you still have to be disciplined you still shouldn't overindulge okay uh, so so yeah that was another uh, thing that uh, was kind of kind of a drawback and the other one was money wise so money wise uh, i was spending like here in greece food is not that expensive i'd spend let's say 100 or 120 bucks for food and i remember ending up like per month right and I remember ending up like uh, spending five or six or even 700 bucks a month for food just because I was uh, like ordering all these uh, different ingredients from Amazon and from all these different websites. And I'd pay like, I remember paying just for the Vita Fiber thing, I remember paying 50 or 60 or 70 bucks. I don't, re I don't even remember. And it took like one month to get here. And like the food, I would get like spinach. I would go through like uh, five pounds of spinach in a day and it was like hard on the wallet so when i backed off from eating every single meal that way and i was eating like let's say once every day or two days or three days i had a lot of cash a lot of cash left out where i could spend it on just eating out i could go out eat out eat like from the best restaurants best chefs best cooks and eat low calorie but eat these amazing foods right because Right. So instead of me spending all this money to make uh, these uh, recipes, I'd spend like a fraction of this money for the recipes. And I had all this money left over to spend on eating out uh, a little bit more often uh, than I used to. So that was another thing I changed. And the other thing I changed was uh, the, the other thing I didn't like was like the type of recipes, the, 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 the taste of the recipes. Uh, especially the the sweet recipes not the savory ones the sweet ones were pretty much similar like their taste were pretty much similar it was like uh, chocolate protein and cocoa powder and stevia so it was like this sweet chocolatey thing like it was either eating like protein uh, chocolate protein shake or the lava cake or like the protein bars all of them had pretty much the similar taste and here in greece we eat mediterranean cuisine and i am from uh, kurdistan iraq and we have our own cuisines and we i i've have I've, I've had all these different cuisines and experienced experiences and i started missing these uh, recipes that i used to eat the the greek the mediterranean cuisine and so i reverted back to eating those foods while keeping some of the recipes as i said and the other thing I didn't love is the second cookbook. Now, that's a business decision, 100%. But me, as a business owner, I would not make a second cookbook. I would just uh, make, actually, I would make a second cookbook, but I would sell it as cookbook one. So I would have only one cookbook and I'd raise the price. So let's say he has cookbook one and cookbook two, right? Cookbook one is 100 bucks, cookbook two is 200 bucks, and each one has different recipes, right? I would ditch the second cookbook as a different product and I would uh, put all the recipes of the second cookbook on the first cookbook and I would just double the price of the first cookbook. So what would that do? And I would like give a notice to everyone that guys, guys, in a week, I'm raising the prices of the cookbook uh, the price of the cookbook and I'm um, updating it. So all the people that bought uh, before the, me raising the prices would uh, have access to all these new recipes. So. What would that do? That would make the cookbook uh, turn into an asset that appreciates in value, right? So me, I bought something that's 100 bucks and now it's worth 200 bucks, right? So this is not just an investment on me, but it's literally an asset that grows in value, right? And I also got all these new recipes without even expecting them to get them. So me as a customer would be super, super satisfied. Now, everyone else that didn't buy after the, 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 raise, the raising of the price would probably complain, right? Everybody complains about how expensive the cookbook is. And like they say, 200 bucks is too much and blah, blah, blah. Now, if I gave away this cookbook to all my previous customers for free, then it would, it would give these customers the incentive to fight for me, 
to stand up, stand up for me, to take my side, right? So it make this, uh, it would separate the audience. So now, like, there's a bunch of people that gi- that are giving shit to Greg for uh, his overpriced cookbook, even though I don't think they're overpriced, right? So the, it would split this audience into two audiences, the customers and the non-customers, and they would fight and they would create engagement, and this would sell more cookbooks, right? Because now everybody is like, yeah, it's it's overpriced. Uh, so th- it doesn't drive engagement. But if you split this into two different audiences, then uh, they, they fight and they talk and they comment and they go back and forth. And that creates massive, massive engagement. And that will sell the hell out of the cookbook. So I would do that. Like I wouldn't sell the second cookbook as a different product. I would just update the existing cookbook and double the prices. And this would create massive engagement, massive uh growth and massive selling and yeah that's just a business move i just want to to mention it uh, just for fun right here okay so that was the video guys i hope you really enjoyed it greg if you're watching it man you really helped me out my diet wouldn't be the same without you and i really appreciate uh, you uh giving us all these things and me as a coach i don't have to start from zero i can use your works and everybody else's work as a stepping stone to make it even better and that's how we go and that's how we actually move forward as a industry and as a humanity uh, overall so yeah that was the video guys i hope you really enjoyed it if you did smash a like tell me uh, what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next one peace out